Hello, my wonderful friends, Arlo here, and today we're reviewing Ukulele. This game was born from one of the highest profile Kickstarters of all time and aims to bring classic 3D platforming back to modern systems. So will this lizard put a warm feeling in my gizzard, or will this bat drive me batty? I don't actually have a gizzard. Uh, I don't think. But let's find out. Uh, I mean, not, not, not find out if I have, I mean, find out if, uh, oh, just cue the footage. By now it's well known, even by the people who have yet to play the game, that ukulele is closer to the Banjo-Kazooie games that preceded it than I think a lot of us expected. The gobbledygook character dialogue, the slide whistle scene transitions, the music, anything and everything having eyes and talking, then of course the core gameplay. It all works very hard to replicate the good old days of Baron Bird action. The game's got five worlds connected together by a hub world, and you'll find pages all over the place, which are used to progress through the game. There are also loads of quills in each level, which can unlock new moves Banjo-Tooie style. Yuka and Laylee even act and move like their predecessors. Yuka the chameleon is the helpful, good-natured dude who runs around, and Laylee the bat is the smaller girl who aids him with her wings and cracks wise at every opportunity. Fortunately though, the two do indeed have their own animal-specific traits. Laylee's got sonar abilities, which can be used in a few different ways, and more interestingly, Yuka can eat things with his tongue to to temporarily gain new powers. This includes eating flowers in order to shoot different elemental projectiles, and eating raw materials to imbue his body itself with heat, stickiness, etc. This mechanic adds some fun variety to the levels and even aids in progression, and I'd say it's the biggest thing that makes the titular team stand apart from Banjo and Kazooie. On the subject of variety, that's something ukulele has in spades. I mean, it's a game inspired by a game that I loved for its variety, which was itself inspired by a game I loved for its variety, so it's really everything you'd expect. The worlds are filled with platforms to jump on and enemies to beat and NPCs to help, and the developers crafted a huge amount of individual obstacles. When you enter a new area, you really never know what the game's gonna have you do. Sometimes it's something fun with a good level of challenge, but as is usually the case with games like these, it's often something very tedious or overly difficult. For instance, the game way too often relies on timed obstacle courses, usually where you gotta get through a series of rings, which of course have eyes on them. These often require such expert timing that it would take dozens of attempts for me to beat them, and sometimes I got to the point where I just had to throw up my hands and quit. Fortunately, frustrating challenges never kept me mad for too long because there was always something else to go and do. The fact that things kept changing up compensated a bit for the varying levels of fun and kept me pushing forward. The level design is solid throughout and each world has a good range of challenges that are unique to the area's theme and the abilities you gain within it. The casino world has you earning tokens you can exchange for pages, which I thought was a fun way to change things up a little bit. There's a minecart course in each world, but I gotta tell you, I did not like these. They controlled terribly, felt unfair, and overall just weren't fun. Also in each world is a unique transformation a la Banjo-Kazooie, and this felt like a pretty big missed opportunity. Only two of them were any fun to run around with, and only one of those felt like it offered enough stuff to do and somewhat lived up to its potential. Overall though, I enjoyed what the worlds had to offer, and it was always fun to open up a new one and see what was in store. The only exception was the hub world itself, which was messy and confusing and not laid out in any sort of logical manner. It just wasn't always easy to figure out where to go, and it caused a lot of confusion and backtracking. I think it's funny that I very recently did a review for Snake Pass, a game that I criticized for having collectibles with essentially no point. Apparently getting 100% gets you a new skin or something, but that's it. Ukulele is the exact opposite. Quills are used to purchase new abilities, and as you might know, I'm a sucker for games where you consistently gain new abilities, so naturally I was very motivated to hunt them down. It's quite satisfying getting a new move and being able to interact with the world in a new way. Getting every quill in a level will also earn you a pagey, which is of course the game's primary collectible. Ukulele uses an interesting mechanic where you spend pages to unlock worlds, but you can also pay to expand each world, opening up new areas and unlocking new challenges. I never once reached a grand tome that I couldn't yet afford to unlock and expand, so at first I thought the mechanic was a little pointless, but I soon realized how beneficial it was. It's fairly easy to get lost in ukulele's big open worlds and miss stuff to collect, so the expansion thing allows you to tackle half of each world at a time and really get your bearings before opening things up even more. It made everything much more manageable and I really appreciated it. Ukulele has a lot going for it, but it's got some big flaws that bring down the experience considerably. The biggest problem, the one that single-handedly destroys a lot of the game's enjoyment potential, is the controls. It's not always easy to say exactly what makes controlling a character feel good or bad, but I think the biggest problem here is just how touchy things are. Yuka breaks into a sprint way too quickly, and the slightest movement of the control stick sends him jerking in another direction. This makes finer movements difficult and overall brings down the platforming, which is unfortunately quite important in a platformer. 
Then anytime you're using a special ability like rolling or flying or really anything that's just not normal running, forget about it. The slightest mistake will send you careening off a ledge and Flappy Flight in Flip in particular is impossible to control. It weaves all over the place, maybe to make it less OP, I don't know, but it's miserable. The camera in this game is also pretty miserable. It's everything we all expect from a bad camera at this point, jittery, inconsistent, hard to control, gets stuck a lot, and it's certainly not helped by the touchy controls as it sometimes has a hard time keeping up with Yuka often sporadic movements. I know every review of this game says the same thing, but it's still worth saying here because it's true. Ukulele emulates Banjo-Kazooie to a T, for better or worse. It's got a lot of the same fun mechanics and concepts, but it's got the same problems too. And though I understand it was never meant to stray too far beyond the formula established in the N64 days, I feel like they could have done at least a little more to modernize it without compromising its status as a spiritual successor. I adore Banjo-Kazooie and of course Super Mario 64, but I'm firmly in the camp that believes these old platformer games have not aged well. Wonky camera, tedious tasks, slippery controls, these are problems that all these games share, and most of them should have been overcome by now. Even if Platonic never intended to redefine the genre, I feel like they should have done more to refine it. Visually, Ukulele looks pretty good. The lighting and textures look really nice, with a lot of detail given to our heroes. Character animations are also good, which is something that's really important to me. It all looks particularly slick in still images, though in motion things are less slick. The game's just kind of rough around the edges, like it could have used some more time in the oven. Some things are beautifully rendered, and some things are just plain not. This inconsistency and lack of polish makes it feel cheap at times, like I'm playing some old GameCube platformer. Graphics aside, even the controls and camera make it harder to look at, because sometimes the screen is whipping around crazily. Not pleasant. But the edgy roughness doesn't stop at the graphics. It's not always clear what you are and aren't expected to jump around on, and even worse, there are all these little lips and crannies that you get snagged on when you're trying to run or jump. During cutscenes or when talking to NPCs, the world around you runs on, meaning the baddies can run up to you and sit there just so you instantly get hit when you return to live play. And don't worry, I won't show it or anything, but there's one part on the final boss, the super long, aggravating battle with no checkpoints, where every bit of health is important, where one in three times I would get hit during a cutscene. I also hit a ton of lag whenever I hit the guy, and the game crashed during the ending cinematic, forcing me to watch it all on YouTube, because there was no way I was fighting that guy again. Despite the frustration and glitchiness though, I would say that the last boss is the only one that felt like a halfway decent 3D platformer boss. Uh, the rest of them just weren't very fun, and the first two in particular were really tedious. They all could have used some more fleshing out, and in some cases, complete redesigns. Fighting on the whole is actually pretty underdeveloped. 95% of the game's baddies are just reskinned versions of the same guys, and all you do to beat them is mash the attack button and knock them all around. There are a few other enemy types, but it's not always obvious when you should be attacking them, which leads to damage that sometimes feels unfair. Really, combat is frustrating at the worst and blah at best. And since enemies only drop health, which you're not as likely to lose if you don't go picking a fight, and since they're just going to respawn anyway, it's usually best to just run on by. In the sound design department, the game is solid. For the most part, the music is a little too goofy for me to want to like listen to it outside of the game or anything, but it certainly does its job of emulating the bouncy, cartoonish sounds of Banjo-Kazooie, and it's all very well composed. I still catch myself humming the theme from the hub world from time to time. Like I said, the game uses the old style of dialogue where characters speak in this strange, chopped up gibberish. <laughs> I think I might be one of the only people who didn't actually find it annoying. Uh, it sounded really silly for sure, and uh, maybe I liked it for that reason. Maybe just nostalgia, I don't really know. Lastly, the game's got plenty of humor. Lots of the jokes were way too cheesy or just fell flat, but I found myself chuckling on many occasions. It pokes a lot of fun in modern gaming, and the villain constantly spouts corporate speak that I particularly liked. I will say, though, that for such a colorful game, some of its jokes went way too far. Uh, I don't mind myself, but I could see a parent watching their kid play and being like, wait, what did he just say? So as you can see, ukulele is a mixed bag. There are quite a few problems that bog down the experience, and I often found myself frustrated, but I can't deny that I did have some fun and always felt that drive to keep going. And hey, that says something in my book. I can't exactly recommend it to anyone and everyone, but I also can't see how a hardcore fan of Banjo-Kazooie wouldn't have a good time with it. If you're still into playing those old games, quirks and all, this is a no-brainer. No, I don't think ukulele breathed new life into the 3D platforming genre as most of us were hoping. Mario still has a complete monopoly on that, but with any luck, Playtonic will take this experience and apply it to a better and more refined sequel. I think there's a lot they could fix with a few more years to tinker with the concept. It was a close call, but I think ukulele was just a little bit too flawed to edge itself up to a 5, and instead rests in the middle of the scale with a 4 out of 7. 
Well, thanks for watching this review, and with a game that's turning out to be this divisive, I'm particularly interested to hear what you have to say down in the comments. And until next time, always remember. You 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 take that to heart. This video was brought to you in part by my top patrons and silver medal winning Jim Belushi impersonators. Bam. If you like what I do and want to support my dream of YouTubing full time, head on over to Patreon where you can get behind the scenes updates of what I'm working on for as little as $1 a month. See ya.